you are welcome to this uh, strategic teaching which is actually about the battle over the soul of Nigeria the battle has been so hot it's been so fierce but uh, one of the things that uh, I have carefully observed as a watchman is that the battle over the soul of Nigeria is in the order of the battle over the soul of the nation Israel. The battle that uh, the devil began first and foremost by fighting against the songs of the priest. The battle began in the spiritual first before the physical. When the devil won the spiritual battle over the songs of the priest of Israel, then the Lord began to succeed in the physical battle. It was the success of the spiritual success of the devil in the battle over the soul of the nation of Israel that brought about uh, the pollution and the contamination of the songs of the priests then who were Hophines and Phinehas. By the, by the virtue of the rage of the dragon, he was able to pull these songs of the priests down and they began to live a worthless life. The Bible says, and they became sons of Belial. They became worthless. They became scoundrels. They, become, they, 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 they became worthless children. They began li living, you know, all manner of evil and polluted and perverted life. And uh, it is not different from what we see today in the nation Nigeria. You see that the devil have succeeded greatly over the sons of the priest, over the sons of the priest. You know, by virtue of the new birth, Every Christian is a priest, but virtually no bad. So we are seeing that this battle, the devil is succeeding. See the kind of life that our youth now live. My young men and young women today in church, look at the life. The devil has won this battle greatly over the life of the youth. Our youth are into, 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 into worldliness. You know, worldliness of the highest order, worldly dressing, you know, manner of worldliness. You know, their youth are into drunkenness into alcoholism they are into smoking you know they are into you know pornography homosexuality lesbianism they are into uh, fornication into abortion you know and all manner of things that you want to think about they are into scamming they are into yahoo yahoo they are into all manner of ritual killing and ritual and dubious businesses you know no matter of 419 and so many things today that are prevalent among the youth is an indication that the devil have succeeded greatly in this battle over the souls of Nigeria. And it was when the devil defeated and won that first spiritual battle that was what made the Israelites to lose the ark. And when the ark was lost, then they, would, they, they, they became defenseless. And then, you know, from that time onward, because when the devil won the battle spiritually, the people could not have the stamina to stand and fight and win again. And that is why the caliphate is succeeding greatly over the church. And you see Christians being sacked from village to village, from city to city, from local government to local government, from state to state, and the enemy is succeeding. Just like we saw in the case of the Israelites, because when the devil has won the spiritual battle and then they have become worthless children, they carry the ark of the Holy God, being carried by worthless men, men who had no value for holiness, men who had no fear of the Lord. And what happened? The ark was lost. And the enemy dealt a great blow on them. And that is how the people of Israel remain as victims for the next 40 years of their, of their work. And it was a horrible time. And this is what we are dealing with. And uh, I trust God that as you continue to listen, the Lord will bless you. And uh, please don't forget to, you know, to subscribe to this uh, channel so that you can continue to get more of these teachings as they come. I'm your brother, Moser George Enemy God Special, who is delivering this uh, message. The Lord bless you as you listen more into this teaching. And please, please, I want to beg you. As you listen to this message, please forward it to other young men in this nation. Nigeria, God is about to do something, but he wants to raise a younger generation. David was a young man that the Lord had to raise, a young man. So the destiny of this nation is in the hand of young men. And that is why you must listen to this message carefully and also forward to your friends and partners. And then uh, we are available for you if you want to invite us, come and talk to you about how to win this battle. 
The Lord bless you greatly in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me see another version. First Samuel chapter 3. Okay, they became what? First Samuel Which version is that? Uh, they became worthless word. Read for that, please. Can you read for that from there for us? Now the sons of Eli were worthless men. They were worthless. They became worthless. And the NLT said they became scoundrels. Worthless sons. And then what happened? And Got they it. had no regard for the Lord. They had no words. They had no regard for the Lord. No respect, no How do you for know worthless sons of the priest? You know, by virtue of our new birth, we are what? We are the sons of the priest. Is that also? Bible says, for we are the kings and the priests that what? That will reign on it. Every child of God is what? He's a priest. And our high priest is who? Is Jesus. Who is in the throne that is in heaven. So by that position, we are all what? We are all sons of the priests. Because a son of a priest, who is he? He's a priest. But the Bible said these sons of priests, they became what? They became worthless. And how do you know sons of priests who had become worthless? They don't have what? What is they don't have? It's the custom of the priest. No, they, no. They don't, what? they don't have what? They don't have regard for the Lord. No respect. No fear of God. They do things anyhow. Mm. Some versions say they don't have respect for the Lord. Mm. They don't have the fear of the Lord. No regard for the Lord. The custom of the priests with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest servants would come while the meat was boiling with a three pronged fork in his hand and he thrust it into the pan of ketchup or cauldron or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. So they did as she to all the Israelites within them. Moreover, before the fat was born, the priest servant would come and say to the man who was sacrificing, Give meat for the priest to roast, for he would not accept burnt meat from him, but raw. And if the man said to him, Let them burn the fat first, and, take, and then take as much as much, he would say, No, you must give it now. If not, I will take it by force. This does the sin of the young men was very great in the sight of the Lord. The sin of which young men now? These children, these priests were very great in whose sight? In the sight of the Lord. Eh? For the men treated the offering of the Lord with contempt. Mm-hmm. Samuel was ministering before the Lord. The boy. Let's stop there, praise the Lord. Let's stop there. We can read all through it. So the first battle that the enemy won was the battle to get the sons of the priest to become what? To become worthless. That was the first part of the enemy war. Praise the Lord. So in chapter 14, the Bible said they were sleeping with the women that came to that came to the temple. Amen. They became worthless. It's a compound, it's a complex war. One of the things that typified them with the world, they were into sexual immorality as well. There were sleeping women that came to the temple. So everything was perverted and polluted. Bible said they became wicked before the Lord. Not before men, before God. So the enemy had won the first point of battle. So in chapter 4 of that same scripture where we are, in 1 Samuel chapter 4, was a time when there was a physical confrontation. And the people did a great blow on them. And they resorted to go and carry the ark of the Lord. And who were the ones carrying the ark of the Lord? The same worthless people. Carrying the ark of what? Of a holy God. Unholy men. Carrying the ark of the holy God. And what happened when they got to the place of battle? The holy God refused to show up. He had abandoned his ark. Because the ark had fallen to the hand of what? Worthless men. And then the enemy did a great blow on the people of God. Collect, captured the ark of the Lord's covenant. And took God's ark to the temple of their God called Dagon. 
and the woes of the people of God continue from that point. The people of God continue in what? In losing battles. The enemy was dealing with them recklessly. Life became a pile of lamentations for them. Things became more difficult for them. And if you come to the context of a nation, Nigeria, it is the same thing. I was in Medugri when Boko Haram started in Medugri. We know what Medugri is today. When you hear of people like Medugri, think that they are Muslims. Medugri used to be 45% Christians. I live in Medugri. I served in Medugri. The Lord told me, go back to Medugri for ministry. I went back to Medugri later for ministry. The enemy has been feeling a great blow on the people of God. We have been losing battle. Where did we begin to lose the battle from? Where we lost the first battle of the life of what? Of the sons of the, of, of the priests. Which now resulted in what? In the loss of the ark of the Lord. Brethren, do you know why our nation is like this today? It's because there is something that we lost. What is it called? It is called the ark of the Lord. What is the ark? The ark is the presence of God among the people. What is ark? The ark is what? Is the glory, the Shekinah glory of Jehovah. See, it was not the day they took the ark to battle that they lost the ark. The ark had been lost spiritually before they took the ark to battle. Am I saying something here? Yes, sir. Oh. And until, see, where did they miss it from? They missed it from when they lost the ark, first and foremost, spiritually and then physically. Where did Nigeria miss it from, brethren? Do we miss it from when we lost the ark? So, how are we going to get out of this trouble? We must return back to where? From where we missed it. And what was the first thing? The first point of losing the ark is what? Is the life of what? Of the children of the priests. Amen? And who are the, who are the ones? It is me and you. So everything you see today in Nigeria, it is because the ark was lost along the way. Let me tell you, brethren, with all with, with all things I know about the Lord, there is going to be what we call the new Nigeria. What I call it? There is going to be what we call what? A new Nigeria. Now, before I speak of my own encounter, let me share some encounters people had with the Lord. In 1977, some group of students of student in one of the high schools in Nigeria, they, 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 they used to have fellowship on campus those days, no FCS fellowship. So, night first fellowship. So, they, they, they were supposed to have a meeting in the morning, and then when they were supposed to have that meeting, seven of them had arrived the place of meeting. And a heavy rain began to fall. What I call it? A what? A heavy rain began to fall. So heavy the rain. And then when they went in, the rain was increasing and was not stopping. So suddenly they decided to, okay, let us start praying. Since it's raining. And immediately John and I began to pray. The glory of God filled the place where they were gathered. And the Lord began to speak to them strategically about what was going to happen in Nigeria. And the Lord told them, he said, you see this country called Nigeria? Nigeria, they, I'm going to allow my people to pass through time of suffering. I'm going to what? I will allow Nigeria to go through a time of crisis. He said, the economy, the economy of this country will go bad. That it will become horrible at the point. He said, it will be bad. He said, I will crumble the economy of Nigeria. And it will continue to go down and down and down and it will be horrible. He says, the, 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 the Muslims, the, the Muslim, he said, they will deal with my children so much that they will be destroying towns and villages completely. They will raise down towns and villages. And my children will become so helpless that they will be running helter-skelter for help, but help will not come. 
everything you see be happening at that particular time, our naira was still better than dollars. They say at that particular time that Nigeria, they say some country used to come to Nigeria to come and borrow Nigeria. So don't borrow your money. We give you as grant. You know what the grant means? With that shoe free. Because Nigeria had so much money at 77 that we didn't know what to do about it. So much money. No, what to do about it. The money was in excess. Where 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 country will come to borrow money? You know what to do them? We give them grant. We dash them. Go and go free. Don't pay back because the money was in excess. But the Lord told them that I was going to cripple Nigeria economy. You know, it looks, when you say such thing at that point in time, it looks as if you are what? You are insane. But God told them why he was going to do it. He said, because the money I brought to Nigeria for my gospel had been misused by my children. Now my children have begun to live their life in hell. He said, what is going to happen will continue. He said, until my children come of age. What did I say? Until what? Until my children do what? They come of age. I mean, you want to ask me what does that mean? I will explain later if time permits. What does it mean to come of age? One of the prophets that lived in Nigeria and died, called by Etin, also prophesied. Corruption. When things will become so bad in Nigeria that Nigerians and Nigeria will be so much abhorred that people will despise Nigeria. He said, but after a while, he said, the light of heaven will shine over Nigeria again. The same man prophesied. He said, when you turn the map of, the map of Africa upside down the other way, he said, the north is South Africa and the trigger is Nigeria. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Where is the trigger? Nigeria is a trigger. At the point, he said, there is going to be a river that is going to break out from Africa. He said, but that river is going to be triggered from Nigeria. At the point, some brethren were praying in South Africa, praying for the issue of, you know, revival in South Africa. The Lord told them, don't pray for your revival. Pray for Nigerians' revival. For it is out of what happened in Nigeria that I will give you out of it. Personally, I have had several encounters. In one of the days, I was still in Kaduna that time, around 2016. I, I was just leaving Abuja, going back to Kaduna. And we came to, you know, the way they do in the north, we came to a particular point. The, this, you know, the driver just drove me into a mosque, and they want to pray. And before we rode, only two Christians. We can't see anything now. That is the way they do in the north. So we came down, we went and started praying. And as I was gazing that mosque, and I was praying the Holy Ghost. I begin to hear. He says, as I do to Babylon, so will I do to Islam in Nigeria. He say one day, Islam will crumble completely in this nation. Yeah. And after I heard that, I began to write one of the books I wrote called uh, The Coming Prophetic Colors of Islam. It's about 300 pages. And then when I was working on that book, I began to hear other people prophesying that God gave prophecy to there were some brethren in the UK that were praying, and God told them that you see that country in Nigeria, mark it. It's that country that will break the I'll break the scepter of Islam. One other person was praying, the Lord told them that Nigeria is a burying ground for Islam. The same Nigeria. Hallelujah. So there is a battle over this nation. And it's between what? It's between darkness and light. Between the devil and what? And Jehovah the Almighty. Who do you think will win this battle? Let me ask you a question. Who will win the battle? Oh. If God and the devil set and fight, who will win the battle? Oh. God will win the battle. Oh. Now, you must understand that God has his purpose for Nigeria. And what the devil is fighting against is what? He's fighting against the very purpose of God for our nation, Nigeria. Just like God had his purpose for the nation, Israel. And the devil was doing what? That is why the devil was fighting all along to what? To truncate God's purpose for the nation Israel. That is what the, that is what the devil is doing. Because as it is now, Nigeria is the Israel of this end time. The Lord have destined that it is Nigerians that he will use to prepare the global church for his return. Nigeria has a prophetic destiny for the end time. And the devil knows this. 
And the devil is fighting to turn it to what? To truncate this prophetic destiny. And what is not happening? How is he succeeding in this battle? The devil has succeeded greatly because he has succeeded in what? In conscripting our youth to become sons, to become oneness. How is he succeeded? He has succeeded in making our youth to become what? To become hopefulness and finesse. That is how he succeeded. It's not for your generation, no. He succeeded many years ago. And the ark was lost before, before many of you were born. When was the ark lost? The ark was lost before many of you were born. But you are in a, you are a fortunate generation. You know why I say so? Because you are in a time when the Lord wants to return the ark back to Nigeria. You are in which time? You are in the time where God wants to work. He wants to return the ark back to Nigeria. That is what God wants to do in this time. Praise the Lord. The ark was lost. But the ark will yet be returned. It will be returned. And let me tell you something. The generation that will return the ark is not the sword generation. The generation of our fathers who have lived, who have lived, do, done ministry for the past 40 years, they are of the source generation. God is raising a defeated generation that he wants to use to return the ark back to Nigeria. And that is the company where you belong to. That is why I say you are fortunate. You belong to which company? The defeated company that will return the ark back to Nigeria. And while I was praying for this meeting, I meditated over this over, over, over coming here. The Lord began to tell me some things. He said, Do you know why I didn't allow the man called David to remain in the house of Saul? I said, No. You remember what happened now? Saul so had to be pursuing David to kill him. Remember that? David had to run for his life. Do you know why? It was God that organized it. Do you know why? Because David would have been polluted in the house of Saul. Let me hear something. David would have won. He would have been polluted in the way, in the house. So God, in His own wisdom, organized the rift between David and what and the house of Saul. And I'm praying for you that all of you here, the Lord become jealous over you. Amen. The David company is a company that will love the Lord with all their hearts. Deuteronomy 11. He said, For you shall love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. The Lord wants to raise an army, a defeated army. The army that will love righteousness and hate iniquity. That is the army that God wants to raise. long overdue to return to Nigeria. Yeah. But the ark has been away because the Lord have not found the defeated company in Nigeria. Praise the Lord. We remember that the ark was away for 17 years. In where? In Israel. The ark stayed in exile for 70 years in Israel. Saul so did ministry, lasted in Israel as what? Well for 40 years. Now, from the past 40 years in Nigeria, the Nigerian church has been building a generation of what? Of souls. The church and the nation has been ruled by souls. What do I say? Mark my word. What do I say happened? The, our nation politically and our church spiritually has what? Has been ruled. Our leaders have been, what do I call them? I call them the source generation. Saul was a priest. He couldn't return. I mean a king. He couldn't return. He couldn't return the ark. Samuel also was a priest. He couldn't return the ark, but he was doing ministry. Let's go to 
first Samuel chapter 7. Read something from here. Let me see. Let me, let me see. First Samuel 7 from verse 1. When the men of preachers, mm-hmm. Jeremy, mm-hmm. came and fetched up the ark. They came and what? The men of came, they fetched the ark of the Lord. And mm-hmm. brought it into the house of Abinam. Mm-hmm. In the field mm-hmm. and sanctified Eliza. Mm-hmm. They did what? Oh. They sanctified Eliza. Mm-hmm. Some to keep the ark of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass. Mm-hmm. Why the ark aboard the creature came? Why the ark was away? Mm-hmm. That the time was long, mm-hmm. for it was 20 years. Mm-hmm. And all the house of Israel mm-hmm. lamented after the Lord. They lamented. Are we not lamenting today? Yes. The ark has been away. I would have been lamenting. What lament? The nation is for lamentation. Yes. Life is not easy anywhere. Some family cannot pay their children's school fees. Yes. Is that not so? Yes. Some children have dropped from school because there is no money. Some parents have lost job, no money. Some people, their business have, have gone down because there is no money. Everybody is lamenting. It was the same thing. Why the lamentation? Because the ark has been away for too long. Uh-huh. And some respect unto the Lord. Amen. Let's stop the praise the Lord. You can read for that. Amen. The ark has been away. So when the ark is away from the people, the people will continue to what? Continue to lament. But when the ark comes in, the people began to what? They begin to rejoice. Brethren, there is going to be a new Nigeria. Amen. But what is going to bring this Nigeria is what? Is the return of the ark. And what do I say is the ark? The ark is what? Is God with his people. What do I say? God with his people, not in his people. That's what I'm saying, but God can be with a people, but not with his people. God was with Samuel, but he was not with the people, he was not with the, with the nation. Am I saying something? Here? Yes, sir. God can be with a person, but not with the people. Uh, so, what happened was that God was with Samuel, but he was not with his people. So, and it is a man that God is with that can bring God to be with his people. Now, I'm going to heard about uh, John Knox. God was with John Knox, but John Knox had to bring God to be with the people. That is revival. Revival is when a man or a, or a man or a group of people who God is with can bring God to be with the land. That is revival. Or if a woman whom God is with can bring God to be with his people. Revival is God with a people, with a nation. That is revival. Or with a land. That is revival. Samuel was doing ministry for 40 years, yet he could not bring God to be with his people. And Samuel was mourning because he was just mourning for, for what happened to the house of the house of, uh, I mean, uh, so let's go to chapter 16 of that same place we are. First Samuel chapter 16. Samuel was just mourning. The people will have, see, let me, listen to me please. See, man of God, one of the things that we see, when God is not with his people, but with the people, you know what happened? The people of God will be seeking the one that God with is, mm. that God is with, True. and they will be making them. True. But when God is with his people, we don't need to seek a man. Mm. Do you know why they were singing for Eli, for, for Samuel? In that place you read, chapter 7, where you read about? When they have, when they have headache, pastor. When they have uh, stomach pain, hey, pastor, I see cockroach for night. Hey, pastor, hey, I see mass pray for night. Pastor, pray for me. Hey, that is what I do in Nigeria now, because God is not with them. We're in church, but God is not with us. Yes. There is something that we need. What do we need? We need God to be with Nigeria. That is when we will live in peace and victory. When God comes to meet the people, the people become what? They will become victorious. 
possible to fight. They will become successful. Their land will have rest. Before we go there, let's see something. Psalm 104, verse 29 and 30. Before we come to 1 Samuel. Because 1 Samuel chapter 16 is going to tell us what you need to do now. So that you can join this company that will bring God to be with our land. Psalm 104, verse 29 to 30. I'm praying for you, those who are here, that every battle the enemy have organized against your life to make you live. Operation corrupt them so that they will not fulfill their prophetic assignment. Amen. Amen. So you now see you think all different kind of vices. Amen. Amen. Alcoholism, sexual immorality, Yahoo, 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 Yahoo plus, all manner of lifestyles. I, I examination they will cheat during exams to just make sure the royal state is, is corrupted. But I see the hand that is stronger than you come upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for all of you who are here who are into different vices, who are into pornography, who are into sexual immorality, masturbation, and all manner of things, who are into drugs, who are into all manner of dubious life. I see the Lord encountering you. Amen. Jesus, Amen. the Lord will separate you unto Himself. Amen. He will cause you to hate the beauty of this day. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sit down. Let's just try and see how we can bring it to a close because I don't know. You didn't give me time. Let's read. I gave you a scripture to read. Psalm 104. Are we there? Psalm 104, verse 29 to 30. Eh? Thou hear their face. Eh? They, are they are troubled. They are troubled. Thou takest away their words. Uh-huh. They die. They die. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the first part of the bargain. What's the first part of the bargain? He, he does what? He hid his face. And what happened? They die. They are tro- Are we not troubled today? Oh, yes. Sir, are we not troubled today? Yeah. He said, Thou he dead your face. They are troubled. Are we not today? We are troubled today. Yes. And we are dying. Yes. Through all different means. We are dying. But not as people are dying. That is the first thing happening, Abby. Yes. So, what we are seeing is a result of lack of the ark. Is a result of what? The fact that the Lord has turned his face upon us. Is that also? Yes. So, now let's go to the second part again of the scripture. Verse 30 now. So, I want to verse 30. Eh? Now, he says, Thou do what? Thou sendeth forth thy word, thy spirit. And what happens? And we are what? We are created. The Lord is in the process of what? Of creating us. What is he about to do? He's about to create us. 
because God is a portal, Jeremiah 18. If there is imperfection, he can destroy and remove. He wants to create us, he wants to create us Nigerians. That will do what? That will send forth thy word, thy spirit. When the spirit of God comes upon me, what does he do? The first thing is that word. He creates the people. What does he do, sister? He does what? He creates the people. He changes the people. The Lord is about to change the people called the Nigerians. From a corrupt people to a righteous people. That is what he wants to do. And it's also talking about the people. Eh? What does he do again? Eh? And thou in the face of the, the face of the face of Nigeria. Two things. He's about to create the people. So that when he's done with the people, what happened? The face of Nigeria is what? Is renewed. So the new Nigeria is a Nigeria with the people who had what? Who had been created. He said, for I will circumcise your heart. Are you know what I'm saying? It was. He said, get He said, taxi from verse 18. He said, and I will circumcise your heart. And I will remove from you the heart of stone. And I will give you the heart of flesh. He says, and I will put in you a new spirit. He said, then you shall obey me. There is something that God is about to do in Nigeria. But remember, amen, Amen. remember that there are some people that must take the front line in moving God to do what he wants to do. Why it has not happened? Because there are no people to take the lead to do what God wants to do. Brethren, the face of Nigeria is about to what? To be renewed. It's long overdue to be renewed. And let's go to that chapter 16 where we saw, where I started to read. First Samuel chapter 16 from verse 1. First read that please. First Samuel 16 from verse 1. First Samuel. Chapter 16 from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, uh-huh. How long will thou mourn for Saul? You have mourned for Saul. Brethren, people, we have mourned for Saul's. At the point we're like, hey, our fathers, do something now, hey, do something now. At the point, some people, some some musicians in Nigeria, stage uh, protest to one of the major church in in, in, in Lagos here. Walk to the that major church. I don't know if you heard of it. Some body mission went there and said, Baba, talk now. What should they happen? Uh, what did they do? Why you not say anything now? We're gonna do something. Mm. Have you not, know, Mr. Sam? Yes, sir. Have we not mourned for too long? Mm-hmm. He says, Sir. He says, Samuel, you have mourned too long for so. Brother, I told you that God is done with the source in Nigeria. He's done with it. The source leading the Nigerian church and leading the Nigerian politics. The Lord is done with them. Amen. He's about to raise a defeated company. Is it done? How long will you come? So I continue, sir. Yes. Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. <laughs> Seeing that when I hear this word of God, fear grip me. Because God rejects men, oh. God does what? He, and the unfortunate thing is for you not to know that men that God have rejected and continue to follow them. What did I say? Mm. Sir, it's a tragedy. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. God have rejected men. I don't want to say some things here. I was in a vision in, in Kaduna. I think I was in 2017 or so. The Lord told me that the case of the Nigerian church and the case of King Saul, mm. that is done with many people in the church for long, but people don't know they are still following them. Because when God rejected Saul, people still thought that Saul was still the king. He was still but in the eye of God, he has been rejected. But the people still thought that they have what? They have their leader. But they don't know that God has rejected them. He was still sitting as a king. That is why your eyes must be open. You must open, Lord, help me not to follow men that you have rejected. Because if you follow this man, you will die with them. The man called Jonathan knew that God had rejected his father from being a king. And he knew that David was the next man to reign. But he was still between two opinions. He was still following his father and he died like he was never anointed. But God forbid. God 
need to open your eyes to know the people that were rejected. They're talking about today now, they were celebrating that the Buhari Atik won the big ticket. I say rejected men. Rejected men. Which are not said that. Men that have not to offer us than to continue to take us into, into bondage. And some of some, some people now they will give them some of our pastors a, a son in Kaduna called me, a pastor, Pastor Jamie will call me. That they came, they came to tell him that he should mobilize pastors in Kaduna Are for Atiku. They were ready to give me any money he did and brand new car. You and sure? he called me and said, You will not do such thing. Don't put your hand into what God has cost. Mm -hmm. Pastors campaigning for politicians. So one pastor went and, and, and went to sorry sorry for what I'm saying. You know. Amen. A pastor went to Tulubu and said that God should tell him be sure that Tulubu is the next president. I say it was a lying spirit that appeared to him, not Jehovah Wine. It is a lying spirit. What I call it? It was a lying spirit. The same lying spirit entered 400 prophets of Israel and told us, Ahab, go for battle, you win. 400 prophets, lying spirit. Be aware of lying spirits. They are everywhere now. You know, the atmosphere, the heaven over Nigeria is compromised. So there is darkness over the nation. And that is why our light needs to shine. They heard it for that, sir. The devil said, fill thy horn with oil mm -hmm. and go. Uh -huh. And I will send thee to Jesse, mm -hmm. the Bethlehem heart. Mm -hmm. For I have provided me mm -hmm. a king mm -hmm. among his sons. Among his sons! Uh -huh. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. As Samuel said, mm -hmm. how can I go? Mm -hmm. If so, hear it, he will kill me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. take an heifer mm -hmm. with thee mm -hmm. and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Mm. Three, and call Jesse to the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and I will show thee what thou shalt do, mm -hmm. and thou shalt anoint unto me mm -hmm. him who I have named unto thee. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue, sir. Okay. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Samuel did that which the Lord spoke, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, mm -hmm. and said, Comest thou peaceably? That was the question. Mm. And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons mm -hmm. and called them to the sacrifice. He sanctified who? Jesse. Jesse. And his sons. So there was one requirement. What is that requirement? Sanctification. What is it called? Sanctification. When last do you hear that word in your church? No. Let me ask you, when last do you hear that word in your church? My brother is doing hard. It's been a long time. You heard that word. When last do you hear that word in your church? So what are the ringing words you used to hear in your church now? Please let me see. Let's, we, are, we, are now, we are now brothers. Tell me, what are the ringing words you used to hear in church now? The ringing words you used to hear in church? Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Let me die by fire. Okay, breakthrough. Prosperity. Prosperity. Uh -huh. Which other word again? Prosperity. Enemy die by fire. Breakthrough. Which other word do you hear in church again? Today. Grace. So oh, beautiful. Yes. Hyper grace. Okay, which other one is it? Grace, 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 grace. Fire. Fire? Okay, fire. 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 <laughs> so, but it's long you hear the word sanctification. Oh, yes. Oh. oh, yeah, go for that, sir. You, I'm coming back today. Verse 6. Uh -huh. And it came to pass mm -hmm. when they were come mm -hmm. that he looked on Elia mm -hmm. and said, Surely the Lord and so anointed me, mm -hmm. anointed is before him. Mm -hmm. Seven. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. Look not on his countenance, mm -hmm. or on the height on the on on the height of his stature, mm -hmm. because I have refused him. <gasps> for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Mm -hmm. For man looketh on the outward appearance, mm -hmm. but the Lord looketh on the heart. Mm -hmm. Verse eight. Mm -hmm. Then Jesse called Abinadab mm -hmm. and made him pass before Samuel, mm -hmm. and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, then Jesse made Shammah mm. to pass by, mm. and he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons mm -hmm. to pass before Samuel, mm -hmm. and Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord has not chosen this. My prayer for you is that you will not be among these. Amen. 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 Seven of them. The Lord could not find, find what he wanted. He couldn't find what he wanted. Sir, so, you know what happened to them? The seven of them had done what is called bodily sanctification. But their hearts 
were not sanctified. Amen. They have done what? They perform what is called what? Emergency what? Sanctification. They just perform body sanctification. But the Lord knows in their hearts that their hearts had not been sanctified. So God kept rejecting them. We can't go further, so you can read the meaning one. But when the man called David came in, you know what they did to them, they didn't do to him. Yes. Immediately he came. The Lord told Samuel, This is the one. Now anoint him as king. Do you know what happened there? David all along had been preparing himself for that day. James chapter 4 verse 7. Let's go there. The people had done bodily sanctification, but they've not done what? No heart sanctification. Because the men that God is looking for, their sanctification must be holistic. Must what? must be holistic. And that is why Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 23 says, it said that your whole body, your whole soul and spirit be preserved blameless. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, when you read from that thing from verse 37 downward, if you read along the line, you see it to 40. It said for the unmarried girl or married one, he said, for he careth for the things of the Lord, how to keep her body and her spirit holy. How to do what? How to sanctify what? Her body and what? And her spirit to the Lord. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Receive the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm-hmm. Continue. Draw nigh to God. Uh-huh. And he will draw. And he will draw nigh to you. Uh-huh. Please your hands. Draw nigh to who? To God and he what? And he will draw nigh to you. What do you now do? Please your Please hands. Please your hands. The people cleanse their hands. Physical sanctification. Okay. Uh-huh. But you know it's wrong. You see now, sir. What do you do again? And purify your hands. And purify your hands. You double-minded. You double-minded. The vessel that God is looking for. The, the Fidi company that will return the act to Nigeria are boys and girls whose heart and whose hand have been sanctified. Can you ask me, what is sanctification? You know what it is? It means to be made holy. What is sanctification? Is it to what? To be made holy. You say for you have to be holy. First Peter chapter 1 for verse 15 down. He said, for I, the Lord your God, is holy. Holy. is holy. Bible says, holiness without which word, no man shall what? Shall see the Lord. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the David army. Now, when David had been anointed and he had become king, the assignment that was paramount to him was to return the ark of the Lord from exile. So that the people of God can enter into rest. And David began to try to return this ark of God back. Because it has been away for 70 years. And David just went and gathered some young men. And just playing in tongues anyhow. Just gathered some young men and were playing in tongues. You may ask me, were they speaking in tongues that time? I don't know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just gathered some, 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 some young radicals in church. And they carried them. Oh, this, let's go and bring the ark of God. Let's go and bring the ark of God. Now if they carry their suit to wear, wear their tie, not their tie. They just carry their coat. Hey. They go there to go and bring the ark of God. Now if they check God at the car, they come. Before you know, go this. this. The same thing that I got offended and, and make the ark to, to be taken away. The same people are coming the same way. And before you know, God now made a breach. And the Lord himself killed the man called Uzzah. Remember the case of Uzzah? Yes. Uzzah, the Bible said, for the Lord he made a breach. Uzzah died instantly there. Bam. The Lord was the one that tumbled the ark and Uzzah wanted to, hmm. He died. And they ran away and left the ark. Fast of him. In 
in his first summit chapter 13, that's what I'm telling you now. What I'm talking to you now is in first summit chapter 13. No, first Chronicles 13. First Chronicles 13. So David ran away and left the ark there. Because they had not prepared a place to bring the ark to. And the people to bring the ark themselves, they had not been sanctified. He carried everybody, anyhow. And they went to go and bring the ark of the Holy Ghost. So who's that died? Let's go to second, first Psalm, second Nicholas 16 now. Let's leave 13, you can read that later. Let's go to chapter 16, that is where I want to make sure so that I can run up. Chapter 16. Chapter 16? Yes, from verse 1, you read 1 to 3, then we we'll jump to verse 12. All right. Mm-hmm. So they brought the ark of God mm-hmm. and set it in the midst of the tent uh-huh. that David has pitched for it. David had, when you read the John, said David had prepared the tent for the ark of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Brethren, do you know why Pentecost did not happen in the, in the synagogue of the Jews? Do you know why? Do you know why? Pentecost did not happen in the Jewish synagogue. Do you know why? Because the synagogue were not sanctified for the Holy God to come, for the Holy Spirit to come to you. That is why Pentecost had to happen where? In the upper room, a place prepared. You couldn't come to those polluted places. The, the ark we are talking about cannot come to these our churches. Can't come to these our churches. They've been polluted. So, David was bringing the ark at the first place. Nowhere was prepared for the ark to come. How can the ark come? offered bond sacrifices Mm -hmm. and peace offerings Mm -hmm. before God. Mm -hmm. And when David had made an end of offering Mm -hmm. the bond offerings Mm -hmm. and the peace offering, Mm -hmm. he blessed the people Mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And he dealt to everyone of Israel, Mm -hmm. both man Mm -hmm. and woman, Mm -hmm. to everyone a loaf of bread Mm -hmm. and a good piece of flesh Mm -hmm. and a flagon of wine. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord. Mm. Let's stop there. Let's go to verse 12, which is where I'm going to. Right. When you read from King James, James said, For David has prepared the place for his. I don't know what King James said. I will have King James here before you go to 12. This King James. James. That's King James. That should be New King James. Yes, New. Okay. Old King James said, For David had prepared the place for his. Continue, sir. Go to verse 12 verse to 14. 12. Mm-hmm. Now, Listen very well, please. Now, verse 12. To remember mm-hmm. his marvelous works mm-hmm. that he had done. Mm-hmm. His wonders mm-hmm. and the judgment mm-hmm. of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh, ye seed of Israel, mm-hmm. his servants, mm-hmm. ye children of Jacob. Which verse are you reading? Chapter are you reading? Chapter, chapter 16. Chapter 16. Okay, go to chapter 15. Okay, chapter I wanted chapter 15. Sorry, I made a mistake. Okay, first, okay. Chapter 15, read 1 to 3 and then go to verse 12 to 14. Okay. Mm-hmm. And David made him house mm-hmm. in the city of David mm-hmm. and prepared a place. And prepared what? A place, a place for eh? the ark of God. For the ark of God. And pitched for it a tent. Mm-hmm. Then David said, mm-hmm. None ought to carry the ark of God mm-hmm. but the Levites. Mm-hmm. For them had the Lord chosen mm-hmm. to carry the ark of God mm-hmm. and to minister unto him forever. Mm-hmm. And David gathered all Israel together to mm-hmm. Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. To bring up the ark of the Lord mm-hmm. unto his place, mm-hmm. which he had prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Let me go to 12. So you see, he had prepared what? A place, a place for it. For it. Uh-huh. I go to verse 12 now. Verse 12. David is now, look, look, be attentive to verse 12 now. Yes. Uh-huh. And said unto them, mm-hmm. Who said unto them? David. David said unto them now, uh-huh. unto them, mm-hmm. Chief of the fathers of the Levites, uh-huh. sanctify yourself. Who is the one preaching here? Mm-hmm. Who is the one preaching here? David. David. Preaching to which? The Levites, the ministers. So the ministers. And who is David? A politician. A politician. Preaching to who now? Ministers. To the ministers. Mm. <laughs> imagine, imagine uh, who now? <laughs> Tunubu. <laughs> <laughs> because God don't tire. God don't tire to wait. He wanted the act. God Himself was desperate to return to them. Because of the innocent soul that were dying in at that time. Mm. Just like it is today in Nigeria. Mm. So, so just like the case of Balaam, a dumb acts now what? Now rebuking the madness of a prophet. Mm. <laughs> God is tired of the nonsense company. And the Bible have said that the mouth of the priest should keep the law. Have yes. said people, so the priest don't even know what to do again. They were confused. 
not, it's not them to tell David the first time, please, this is the order. They didn't instruct David. They just carried us, yo, yo, yo. And then David went and David hit the rock. And David came back. And David began to search carefully now to know what was wrong. And he saw from the books. I have taken my life to search to know what was wrong with this country. And that's why I write it. So many books. I write, I have over 20 something books in print now. I wrote this book. This book came out this year. The seven public step to part the new Nigeria. It's still in my search for God. Why has the ark not come? And the Lord told us seven things that we must do in order for the ark to return to this nation. Seven things, things that we must do. They must be followed precept by precept. If the ark must return, David tried to do it the first time he didn't succeed. So he now went back to the drawing board to search the scriptures of the prophets. To know what was what was written. What did, what did God move holy men to speak about the return of the ark? David went to search. And David discovered from the books that the priest that must return the ark, there is something they must do. He discovered the act that a place was prepared for the act for the act can return. He discovered because the priests have become, they have gone what? They are they are they were just eating tight and nothing and living in us. They, they, they forgot about the law. People could not seek for the law from their mountain. Which was what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 15. When you read from verse 1, he said, for a long season. Let's see that before we come there. We're coming here. 2 Corinthians 15 for verse 1. He said, for a long season. He said, for Israel had been without the true God and without the law because they were. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Israel has been without the true God. That was the case of Israel. They have been without what? Without a true God. Why? Uh -huh. And without a teaching priest. Without a teaching priest. Without the law. Why were they without the true God? Because there was no teaching priest to lead them into the law. So they were without the, without the true God. That has been the case of Nigeria. David now discovered, and the king, Somolu, now, now stood and called pastors together in Lagos. Somolu gathered all the pastors in Lagos together. Somolu and Tudubu, his friend. <laughs> they now do general assembly. They say, Pastor, come, governor, what to see all of you? They think that governor is going to give them 100,000 naira. You know, that one, they go come sharp, sharp. Mm -hmm. They go cancel every program they have. Governor, what to see all pastors in Lagos? Even though we stay down with them, we'll contain us now. Maybe we'll go to Redeem Camp. Maybe Redeem Camp cannot contain all pastors in Lagos. Every pastor will come because they, this will come, come and see all pastors. They'll be like, say, something won't change your hand. Hey. <laughs> now all of them gather together. Like... <laughs> Are you laughing? Yes. <laughs> they will come because they are thinking is I was going to give them monetary gift. Only for Sawolo and Tunubu. Tunubu to now become the pastor and now open Bible. <laughs> has been our case, brother. And what did you not tell them? Let's go for that. Eh? Let's continue. Why well, is still verse 12? Of second, uh, first, uh, first Chronicles chapter 15, why well, verse 12? Uh -huh. Please, be there. Let's go together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ye are the chiefs mm -hmm. of the fathers of the Levites. Uh -huh. Sanctify yourself. Sanct what? Sanctify yourself. Sanctify yourself. The word that they refused to preach for the past 70 years. The same word that was omitted from the Nigerian gospel for the past 40 years. It was omitted for how many years? 40 years ago. They imported prosperity gospel. They imported a standard security message, which is called hyper grace message. Every other gospel was imported. And what, what, what was it doing? It was in a bid to make us to continue as what? As worthless priests. So that the ark will not return to us. Everything you see today happening in the United Church, it was sponsored because our our word, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers. Against the word, the prince of the power of air. The Bible said the spirit that none walked in what? In the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2 from verse 2, 2, 2. There is a spirit. It is called what? The spirit of what? It is called the word. 
the spirit of what from where from that now work at what in the children that is why they disobedient the church children disobedient to their parents parents disob uh, mother disobedient to what uh, to the husband husband to the wife a uh, church member to, to what pastors. to pastors and pastors to pastors and pastors to church member disobedient everywhere and what is the result divorce and remarry before there was no divorce and remarry in Nigerian church today divorce and remarry become the order of the day is that not so yes somebody marry I was told somebody marry in Lagos here they marry after they marry now now in the, the man sit down for his house yeah. you know the brief we are going to take he said me brief for you no, no, don't go. Me, I go cook for you. He said, did you bring me? Did you bring me to come and be? Am I your cook? And that was where problem started. But before you know, the lady went and filed for divorce, and then the divorce. They are Christians, so born again, don't talk it. <laughs> so marriage today break after one day, two weeks. They are married that break after one month, after even two days. The marriage are breaking. A friend of mine wanted to do together. My friend from the university, and the wife was behaving, and then he said he wanted to go for divorce. He was not telling me this. He went to a lawyer. The lawyer told him that if you file your divorce, it may last many, many years, like five years, because there are so many, too many cases in, in court for divorce. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The shocking thing: ninety-nine <laughs> percent of them are Christians. Go and check. Go and check. Do the ritual. The people doing ritual killing. Who are they? My wife was comforting a young man the other day over somewhere in, the, in one place. The young man telling, no, 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 it doesn't matter that they have, after all, my pastor, they pray for me. If I hit Mugu, I will pay my tithe. Say, my pastor is praying for me now. If I hit Mugu, I will pay my tithe. Oh. Sons of billiard, worthless children. They will now use the security message, this high grace message, to now what? To now make us to be at ease in Zion. Ah. Comfortable in sin. Why the Bible says in, in uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness is in your own Bible. The grace of God does seven the life of the believer. How many things? Seven things. The first is to save you, the second one is to make you to say no to ungodliness, it's to make you to live a self control life, to live righteous. Go and read your Bible. Grace of God makes you to live righteously, not unrighteously. If your own grace does not make you live a righteous, godly life eh, in this present world, that your grace is not the grace of Jesus Christ. It's a demonic grace. Read your Bible. Let them not confuse you again. You say, the spirit that now walk, that now what? Are you there? Ephesians chapter 2. That now walk it. Can you read it for me? That now walk it in what? In the children of disobedience. Uh huh. Uh huh. You walk according to the force of, of this world. Uh huh. According to the prince of the power uh -huh. of the air. Uh -huh. The spirit that now walk it in the children of disobedience. Uh huh. Among whom uh -huh. also we are we all are our possession. It's okay. Let's stop the praise alone. The there is a spirit. Sorry, I'm taking your time, brother. No. Eh? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am seeing a generation arise and say, no, we refuse to remain like this. The devil, you have lost this battle over my life. I refuse to be a worthless priest. Because it took worthless priests to lose the ark. And it must take sanctified priests to return the ark. What I say? It took worthless priests, sons of Belial. It took them, priests, wicked people, priests that have no respect for holy things, that have no respect for holiness. It took them to lose the ark. If the ark is going to return, it must take Christians who have what? Who have understood and have clinged to sanctification to bring the ark back. Read for that, sir. You didn't finish, sir. Right. The ark will come back, but we are determined on when the ark will come back and when it will come back. <laughs> Verse 12. Uh -huh. Second Chronicles, please. First Chronicles. First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 15. Why right, verse 12? Okay. 15, 15. First Chronicles 15, why right, verse 12? Uh -huh. Read that you I stretch now, not bring it. Alright, alright, alright. Mm -hmm. And said unto them, mm -hmm. Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Mm -hmm. Sanctify yourself, mm -hmm. both ye and your brethren, mm -hmm. that ye may bring up 
the ark of the Lord, of the Lord God mm -hmm. of Israel mm -hmm. unto the place that I have prepared for it. Uh -huh. for that is verse 12. Yes, that is okay. verse 13. Mm -hmm. Sanctify what? Yourselves. Yourself. Now, brethren, if we are going to succeed, your generation now, because remember, David was a young boy. The, the elderly pastors have failed Nigeria. The elders are what? They have failed. They are source generation. God is now trusting that you, who are the younger one, will emancipate and return the ark back to the nation. And for you to be able to do that, what must you do? You must answer the call to what? The call to sanctification. There is a call you must answer. What is it called? The call to what? The call to sanctification. The answer. Okay. Read, now, go, please be careful. Verse 13 now. Let's go to verse 13. Eh? Now, for because ye did it not. Now, listen. He said, because you didn't do what? What did they didn't do? Because they didn't sanctify themselves. Eh? At first. At first. Eh? Now, the Lord our God made a breach upon us. Eh? He made a breach upon us. Eh? For that we ought him not, that for we sought him not after the truth. You order. There is what? There is an order. The first time they didn't succeed because they didn't what? They didn't answer the call to sanctification. That's why they didn't succeed. So David learned his lesson the hard way. And now he was giving them express command. It was a command. Sanctify yourself now. We didn't, we didn't succeed the first time because we didn't do it after the order. Uh -huh. Verse 14. Uh -huh. So the priest uh -huh. and the Levites uh -huh. sanctified themselves they sanctified us. to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And my prayer for you is that you answer this call to sanctification. Yes. Let's see something. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Please, my time is over. Let me know so I can write up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Sanctification, I can teach it for, for, for one week, not stop. Chapter 4, verse. Amen. I can teach for a whole year. I will not stop. The the for what? Is it, it is what, brethren? What is the will of God? Please listen very well. Please open your Bible, please. It is what? Sister, it is what? What is the will of God? Sanctification. Now, sanctification. No, let me show. Please. Are you sure it's your own Bible? Now, let me ask you a question. Who were the people that Apostle Paul was addressing? Him? Was he unbelievers? No. Who are those ones? The church in Thessalonians. Church. The sense the people were born again, like you. It is what? What is it? It is which will? Whose will is it? Will the will of God. Even your word. Even your son word. Sanctification. Your sanctification ahead that what shall happen. Read for you should have from fornication. So sanctification is one is the thing that brings you to a point whereby you can live, even though a woman naked himself, you know you will shake body. That is what? You should abstain from what? From what? Fornication. From fornication. So, a believer who is still fornicating, is he doing the will of God? No. And why is he doing the will of God? Why is he doing so? Because he's not what? Because he's not sanct. Why is it difficult for you to live holy life today? Why is it difficult for you to live holy life? Because there's no what? They are not sanctified. And why are they not sanctified? Because they've not been told. Read for that. Go to the next verse. Verse 4. Uh -huh. That every one of you should know how to possess. Hey Amen. There is a knowing. Some verses say that you will learn. You learn sanctification. There is something that you learn. You learn to what? You learn it. Jesus said you are made clean by the word that I speak to you. You learn it. It should be taught. When you go born again, you should, there should, you should come to a knowing. First Timothy 2.4 He said that who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And Jesus said in John 17, he says, sanctify them, O Lord, with your truth, for your word is truth. And that is why 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, can I write down that? 2 Timothy 1, 9. He says that, who have saved us and have called us to live a holy life. Brethren, salvation by grace is a means to an end. Why you are saved is so that you can come to a point where you are empowered to live a holy life. Who has what? 
Second Timothy 1 9. He says, What? Can you read for me? You are still coming to your place. So, who had what? Who had saved us and have called us? Sanctification is the higher calling. Uh -huh. And called us with what? With an holy calling. That call is a call to sanctification. When you read NLT, it says, Who has saved us? Well, NLT here or NIV here. And have called us to live a holy life. Ronnie, you are not just saved. To be saved is number one. But the next phase is what? Now, if you are saved, you are what? If you are born again, what happened to you? You can now enter the kingdom of God. But the next thing is that, will you stop the kingdom of God? Don't you want, 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 want to enter the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. So if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, what must you do? You must, you must answer the call to holiness, which is the call to sanctification. Yes. And that is why people are dying and they are going to hell. Because they were not told the truth. Because after you are saved, you must come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is that it is the will of God. Even your word. Even your son word. Certification that you should do what? Eh? Read for the sister. Verse 4. Yeah, verse 4 now. Eh? That you should know. Eh? First to Nega chapter 4 verse, well, verse 4 now. You can read if you have, if you have, if you have it on your own Bible. First to nine, chapter four, verse. Uh -huh. That everyone of you should know how uh -huh. to says is very soon in sanctification and honor. Are you now? You should do what? You should know how to possess this word. This is your best word. In what? In holiness. Some version use the word. Anybody have holiness in his Bible? Some version use in holiness and in honor. You should know how to. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Uh -huh. To do what? Each of you should learn to do what? Each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy, holy and honor it. Each of you to what? To learn how to control your own body. In a way! Brethren! The worthless priest will not return the ark. The one to return the ark to Nigeria is a defeated company. They are a company who have won, who know how to possess their body in a way that is what? That is holy and honorable. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. From verse 21. He said that whosoever project himself from this. Whosoever what? Are you here with me? 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 21. He said, for whosoever project himself from this. For in a great house there are many vessels, some to honor, like and like honor like David, and some to honor like what? Like who has been a house. He said, but whosoever project himself from this shall be what? Shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify and what? And meet for the master's use. And prepare unto every good work. The Lord is looking for a company of young believers in Nigeria who had answered the call to sanctification. Their hands is clean. And then their what? Their heart is clean. This is the company that will return the act to Nigeria. It is this company that when they call, he said, before you call, I have answered. This is a company that will bring the glory that we want lost in Nigeria back to Nigeria. Every day our naira is falling. As the last time I changed dollar, it was a 150. I changed a 155 before, before I know it was 158. Uh, I mean a hundred dollar. I changed it about 58,000. Then now it's about it's about 60,000 now. Just hundred dollar. My wife, one day I gave my wife dollar to go and change. So you mean one hundred dollar? You have they are giving us fifty something thousand. I said that is how bad it has become. Amen. Amen. When will the story change? He says he sent forth the spirits and their words. And they are created. And thou renew the face of Nigeria. When will this happen? Brethren, until we answer the call to what? To sanctification. The ark will not return until we return back to sanctification. The company that will bring the ark back are what? They are the sanctified company. How we make my heart your dwelling place. How we build your 
throne in my heart. Come, Father, come, Son, come, Holy Spirit, come and take your place in us. Sanctification will affect your outward look and it will affect your inward man. It's a total change outside, inside. It will affect your dressing, it will affect the way you talk, it will affect your relationship. There are some relationships that you have to drop for you to answer the call to sanctification. Amen. Please, I want to give you a sample. Please, go here. Go and Google sanctification again. You have your phones. Go and Google what is sanctification. Google it. Sir, it was the cry for sanctification that brought the Azusa Street Revival. Exactly. By William Simon, that brought Pentecostalism. It was when there was contention against sanctification and the message began to drop. That was what led to the death of that revival. Even after it had brought many churches. Do you, how many of you are, do you know how Redeemed Church started? You know how many Redeemed Church, Redeemed Church as, as, as what? Redeemed Church, how many of you know how Redeemed Church here? Redeemed started as Deeper Life is today. Are you aware of that? Let me tell you, if you go and make research, Assemblies of God's Church, Four Square Church, the Apostolic Church, Apostolic Faith Church, they all erupted from the Azusa State Revival. What was the cry? The cry of William Selma was that, oh Lord, bring us back to the days of the Wesleyans. Because John Wesley never brought the believers back to the place of the apostolic doctrine of holiness, which there was a drift from. But we allowed American gospel, the polluted American gospel. You know what we have today is what? Is polluted American gospel, which is what we call the New Age movement. A blend with Christianity. That is what we have to do. And it's taking us to America today. Every day to the American. I was a friend was telling me that in America in the last few days that up to 40 children has been killed. A boy of 12 years carried a gun, shot her grandmother, went to her school and killed nine other children. Yes. That's the same. Listen, balance. Everything is upside down over there. And we are carrying the abolition. You should be ready for it. But I trust God the Lord will use all of you here. Amen. This kind of brother needs to pray before we run up. So please, Pastor Pat, we need to pray small hearing this kind of music. So there are a lot of books here. I don't know whether you like them. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Is that? You want to ask me, Sean? Okay, no problem. When we finish. Yes. I love you. The um, I want to believe that this message has blessed your life greatly. The message has blessed your life greatly. You know what it means? There are many people that will come to you for feeling. I want to believe strongly that you've been greatly and tremendously blessed by this message, and I pray that the uh, the impacts of this message will, will last longer and uh, it will draw you closer to the Lord. God bless you. I am your brother Moses Ojo Chenemi Gospecha, the coordinator of National Restoration Program and National Emergency Intervention Project. Please, I urge you to please try and share this message to your friends and contact and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can continue to be updated with revelations from the Lord that will bless you. Per adventure, you want to know more about our ministry, or you want to contact us, or you want to invite us for any program, or you want to get our books such as The Seven Prophetic Steps to Bat the New Nigeria, uh, The Roadmap to Collapse and Sustain a Victory over the Caliphate, Part 1, and then the 16 uh, Steps to Collapse the Caliphate and Restore Our Nation, and then books such as The Book of Prophecy of Nigeria, The Pathway to Batting a New Nigeria, The Coming Prophetic Collapse of Islam, 
uh, books such as Understanding what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches now, volume 1 to 3. And then uh, several books, Understanding the Ongoing Bloodshed in Nigeria, and so uh, how uh, I avoided the roads to hell, how to qualify for rapture, the seventh step to, to, you know, to make rapture, the requirement for rapture, and several books, the border encounter for the last revival that uh, we have written that, has, that will bless your life. You can get some of this book on the Amazon bookstore. Once you Google books by most of your Chenemi God special on Amazon bookstore, I believe strongly that you get this book. If you want to contact us for local supply, you can get us on a 080-3392-1213. Let me take it again. 080-3392-1213. Then if you are outside Nigeria, you can add our code plus 234. The Lord bless you as a partner with us, as you support this work so that we can continue. Our desire is to take this message to every look and cranny of this nation, to be on a different uh, media channels so that we can, this voice can be amplified. But I'm sure God want to, you want to be used to put us on the media or to support this work in any way. Please don't hesitate to contact us and the Lord will bless you richly. In the name of Jesus, Shalom Maranatha, Maranatha, Hosanna.